Well, yeah, I have a very sort of ambivalent view of myself as um, as an artist or as a filmmaker. I mean, somebody once, when I was first starting in films in New York, says, if you want something on your gravestone in, your, in the film business, I think the best thing is filmmaker. If you can honestly say that, that's all you need to say. And that's, uh, that, I think, would, I would like that on my gravestone, along with whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Um, beyond that, I, I don't think it's possible to or, or advisable or even smart to call yourself an artist or talk about yourself as an artist. I mean, uh, first of all, the, the, it's a business, and uh, to forget that or ignore it or act like it's not there is, is just idiotic. Um, and secondly, it's, it's, it's very difficult to know what will later be judged as art. I, I guess what I've tried to do is I've tried to make movies where I can honestly say I haven't seen that before and to follow um, my deepest intuitions and uh, in some cases literally my dreams um, so that I don't feel like I'm copying something that's come before me and uh, to try to do things that um, you know speak to sort of the the areas outside the fences you know the, where the wild animals are are still because I, it seems to me that the things that move us historically, both personally and nationally, are those things, those things that aren't on the grid of rationality. It, it's funny, you know, having traveled now in a lot of third world countries and I just came back from Africa, it's like you see that every civilization has its own grid of what it thinks reality is and what uh, its proper behavior and uh, what is civilized. And usually what happens is that sooner or later that grid is shattered and uh, you know something like World War II happens or you wipe out the Native American population or you know Spain invades South America and decimates virtually every <laughs> living creature there and takes over. You know, and then suddenly it's the grid is back and we're civilized and we're religious and we're this and that. But um, there seems to be a deeper grid that I've tried to find, and that is how, how the engine of life really works. And I think it, it works a lot off of violence, like it or not. And it works off a lot off of um, things that are not rational and very difficult to perceive and in some ways can only be sort of a dumb a, a sort of sketched and shadow played in, in films and in uh, horror films. It's not something I'm terribly happy about. I wish I wish the world did run, so there weren't uh, Bosnias and there weren't uh, Rondas and there weren't uh, Selmas. And but it, that seems to be the way it goes about its business at significant times. And uh, to try to capture that in symbols on film and uh, to sometimes succeed, I think, is uh, is very exciting and gratifying. Beyond that, I have no idea whether anything I've done is of any significance or not. You know, it's like uh, it's like the end of Casablanca in a way. You know, we probably most of what we do doesn't amount to a hill of beans. Um, but it's been fun. It's been fun to be in the uh, in the business and to survive. It's been fun to sit in the back of audiences and watch them scream and jump and laugh. Um, it's always gratifying to see how smart the audiences are because quite often my audiences are the outcasts, you know, the kids with the long hair and, and blacks and Hispanics and uh, people that society thinks, you know, uh, discounts. And they're quite often the, the absolute quickest to grasp what I'm doing, much faster than the civilized critics and people that supposedly are supposed to have heads on their shoulders. So that's a good, that's a good sign for civilization. I think ultimately the great civilization, which is whatever will allow us to survive, is that, uh, you know, in the streets, in the uh, theaters of the most popular movies are very, very smart people, um, smart kids, and uh, that's encouraging. <laughs>